my New Year's resolution is to not to clean this silicon mat. Well, it's the end of the year, and I thought I could just make a video because I've got a couple of things I might want to like hack or take apart and just take a look at. A bunch of things came up at once. So yeah. Thanks again to everyone who joined the live stream. How about this fire alarm that you can't change the battery on? This thing started beeping this morning. I was confused because I was cooking breakfast. But this one's in the basement, and I'm like, what has happened? Yeah, it's so like when you insert this into the base and twist it, that activates it. And you can also deactivate it, which I guess is what this switch is here. It's done a little differently. I wonder how this works. Well, this, this slides in and out. Oh, I see it's a one-way of discharge. So you don't have the instructions for this, so it's not as obvious how to discharge this one. Oh, but there's a nice loud piezo. Bonus. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the one that uses a slightly radioactive isotope to detect smoke. The other ones use optos. Slide to deactivate? What exactly am I sliding? Do I have to like cut through it? I guess you really have to want to deactivate this. It's like when Ripley had to blow up the ship. And then she had to go pick up her orange cat. So that's why you should never take orange cats into space. Right, bud? Oh, it's now been deactivated. Well, I can see why they changed that on the new fire alarm, because that's it's kind of obtuse. So I guess it's discharging the batteries? A Mauricium. So it's an American, <laughs> I assume it's named after America. It's named after America Vespucci, not the country. Yes, yeah, so it's America. Okay, why did they call it like smoke detectoresium or something more interesting? Why is there an American flag? Because your condo's in America. Oh, there's an integrated circuit under the under the sensor. Oh, this can't be that radioactive. Otherwise, they wouldn't let you buy it at Menards. I also got some light bulbs to go out in my kitchen. I can use this Menards bag to hold bud poop. Bud poop. Boop, 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 boop. Look at how these failed. Big old honking cracks. That's disconcerting. Didn't Big Clyde make a video about these? Some sort of glass infused plastic. It's not ceramic. Wonder why it cr Well, I guess it's, well, from heat, but I thought these things weren't supposed to get that hot. That's plastic. Where's my... Bud, go find my big screwdriver. Make yourself useful. I got you those million dollar freeze-dried turkey treats. That's the least you can do. At least claim their 12 watts at... Yeah, it's a glass-infused plastic. They claim their 12 watts. And so... 12 watts. 120 volts. That would be... Tenth of an amp, 100 milliamps, it's not that much power. But I guess if there's three of them. Well, and this thing is light as a feather, so I don't think it's doing much for heat seeking. Heat sinking. Is the only purpose of this an insulator? What's going on here? What's all this then? Hmm. Well, it doesn't appear to be connected to hot. It's probably for the best. I know Big Clive has done a video like this. I think he was like comparing like good LED light bulbs to cheap ones. Hmm. Well, there's not much in it. Oh, it looks like the... I assume this is coated with phosphorus. Looks like some of the phosphorus has flaked down into the components. They're kind of dusty. She said, leave your name at the sign of the tone. Call you right back when I get home. Do, 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 do. Hey, you look good, I know so well. 
I don't think these things last five years though because I haven't lived in my house for five years. I think, well, actually, I think the, the previous landlord, because this used to be a rental, I think they had LED bulbs in almost everything when I moved in. But of course, I was like, no, they must be daylight. They must be daylight bulbs because I'm the daywalker. They must mold that plastic around it in order to seal everything in place. Like it's going around the edge of the can here. It's got to be aluminum, right? Yep. The aluminum magnet isn't sticking to it. It must be aluminum. Let's see how she chooches. Yeah, they really got the edge of this sealed here. Well, they're probably trying to isolate you from the AC part of it. Oh, I, I, you know what I need? I need one of those P51 can openers. Wait, I already have one. Because of course I do. Why wouldn't I have that? Oh, it's a metal-backed PCB. Oh, it's going to be some of your heat sinking. Oh, is that meant to... Oh! Oh, I bet, yeah, I bet they're sinking the heat through the PCB into this. And that's probably all they're doing. Oh, and that's why so much heat transferred into the casing of it. Uh, yeah, so even though it's not a ton of power, it's in an enclosed space over time. And it's sinking the heat into this glorified pop can. Oh, no, I think they're using a capacitor drop. <laughs> Big Clive would be like, oh, no. Is that all they're doing? Yeah, it looks like that's connected to the the neutral side. Yep, that's all they're doing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> now this is how they make them so cheap. You've got a bridge rectifier and a resistor and a capacitor which does your rudimentary voltage conversion and then you have a regulator here which has been burned away and then I think this is what actually failed. Look how this came loose. See that? Oh, that's how they do they, Oh, they like put, they put the PCB in at a right angle and solder it. Look at that. <laughs> Why did I just buy more of these? But it's a good brand. It's Sylvania. Oh, is this some sort of like thermal adhesive? Probably. Yeah. See how it's still somewhat. In, well, it's not dried up because it it wouldn't be. Yeah. So they're basically just sinking the heat through the edge of this metal backed PCB into this can. But note how, how there's no fins on it. Like if you get like a really fancy LED bulb, they'll, they'll actually be like big aluminum heat sinks on it, like the ones I have in the garage. And the ones I have in the garage have lasted more than four years as well. Hmm, funny how that works. Yeah, so I think the specific failure point was this. So yeah, they, they put this little interface on, which is like another little PCB, and then they solder it at a right angle and then it compresses onto this, or perhaps a solder to it, and that's what transfers the power, so... Amazing. I wonder why they couldn't just stick this through and solder it directly. There's probably some sort of reason. For... Oh, well, maybe maybe this was never actually attached, so this is actually acting like a... Not necessarily a strain relief, but by not having it permanently attached, it makes it more likely to not break. Possibly? I want to say in the Big Clive video he said that using that resistor and capacitor to drop the voltage is acceptable, but only if it's completely isolated from the user. Hmm, the connections are good. Okay, next up is my ancient Tandy PC7 pocket computer. I think I got this for my 13th birthday. It still works. And somehow this membrane still is intact. I don't know how. Like after being unfolded millions of times. The contrast is not very good. I don't know if that's the batteries or something else. My sister's scratched Ben is strange on the back of it. This yeah, this is all Cree. Look, she wrote her name. Ben is strange. Ben is a dope. And I heart EF. I know exactly I know Eddie Furlong. Yeah, I couldn't help but think about that when that Dark Fate movie came out and like John Connor, well, what happened to him in the beginning? And they're like, oh, now everyone in the movie is a female. It's like, you know, I had a 12 year old sister when Terminator 2 came out and she wasn't covering her bedroom walls with pictures of Linda Hamilton. Let's just say that. <laughs> Three, maybe a little bit on the low side. Let's make sure it's not the batteries first. I was originally going to work on programming for the MGC thing today. Although I did a lot of that on Thursday and Friday. I did find a good 
PCM audio example, which seems to work. You can basically DMA 8-bit samples into the into a PWM counter and it and this thing has seen some seen some hard times. Are there any screws even left? <laughs> your Tandy PC7 unit's a bit beat up. You want a new one? Not on your life. Me and that calculator have been through a lot of adventures together. Does the spine come off? Oh, it's like one of those folding phones. Brother-in-law got one of those. I guess they're kind of cool, but they're so expensive. And you can definitely see the crease. Ooh, lots of gooey goodness there. Oh. Oh, there's the contacts for the keyboard. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Yeah, they're going into rubber contacts just like an LCD. See those? See, the one thing I'm wondering is maybe the contrast potentiometer is messed up because it is old. I mean, it's obviously lasted longer than the potentiometer in an Xbox controller. Oh, ha, 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 snap. Wow, that's all there is to it. Mm. Who knew? You know, I'm sure most of it is driving the LCD, which is probably that guy right there. Well, that's a Hitachi part. Wow, yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah, there's some sort of external device you can plug in like cartridges or something. I don't know, I, I never saw them in stores. I'm not sure what they were. It is a Hitachi, but this is actually the main processor. Huh. This possibly could be the RAM. Although looking at, I'm, I'm checking online some of the older Casios. Yeah, actually that's a pretty good chance that that's gonna be the RAM right there. 1985, so this thing sat in the shelf for three years before my mom bought it for my birthday. All right, yeah, so this is the processor and that's the RAM. It's 4K, four bit words, which would be two kilobytes. And then I think you get 15, yeah, you get 1536 bytes to program on this. So it must be using the rest for basic or something. Wow, what a system. Hopefully I didn't ruin anything. I mean, this would be the part I'd be most worried about. These capacitors are older than the average YouTuber. <laughs> Look at all the folded ribbon cable. That was pretty common back in the 80s. She said, leave your name at the sound of the tone. Call you right back when I get home. Do 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 do. Yeah, those capacitors are probably good for another 34 years. See, it's got some erroneous programs on it now. Reset. Cool, now there's no programs. Oh, maybe I should show you how you make a program on this. That is assuming I remember. Let's see if I can get the contrast to work for me and the camera. 10. Input. Uh, was it shift? There we go. Uh... But are you being bad out there? I get I get the distinct impression that you are being bad out there. Oh wait, I think you just do the variable like that. Let's see, 20. C equals A times, it's gotta be a pi button on here, oh there it is, pi. 30, print, um, colon, that, semicolon, C. Okay, so that's, that's program entry mode. So I think it was like from zero. All right, so that's immediate mode. This is program mode. So I want to look at the program again. I hit P0 and then I can list it out. Amazing program. Okay, so then this, I think pushing mode period did something too, but I can't remember. Oh, I think it did extended characters. Maybe, is that how you got like, oh yeah, see how I got like these poker shapes? So if I go shift, oh wait, I guess I'm still in extended mode, okay. So exit extended mode, so I have to do shift this. Okay, it gives me, the, gives me the keyword go to. Okay, got it. Okay, so if I go to mode zero and I push P zero, it should execute program zero. Radius, one, 
Circumference, 3.14, blah, 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 blah. Oh, what is that? Nine digits? What is that strange sound? It's this wishbone toy trying to talk. I got this from a Denny's, I want to say, like a million years ago. Well, it could have been that long ago. This was 1999. Is that show still on in 1999? Yeah, this thing ran for a long, long time. But then the battery finally died. Oh, they probably, probably, what is that called? Inside out stitch? I wonder, maybe they hid it under his collar. How you can see like the, the dirtiness. Oh yeah, that's what they did. That makes sense. All well, the collar's attached in the front. Yeah, there's the stitches. Take this, Ned Stark. Son, I want you to go shoot that old white dog. That talks about storytelling and imagination. I can't do it, Pa. That dog is my friend. You gotta become a man, son. The only way to do that is to shoot that old white dog. <laughs> well, I guess I'm a man now. Oh, it looks like he's got some guts in there. Poor Wishbone. Oh, let's see if I can remember it. <laughs> What's the story, Wishbone? What's that you're dreaming of? Such imagination from such a little pup. Chains a key. What's the story, Wishbone? Ah. Uh, oh, this is all that's in it? Reminds me of the end of Batman where the Joker's got that voice box after he falls off the tower. We were made for each other. Beauty and the Beast. Of course, if anyone else calls you beast, I'll rip their lungs out. Wow, it's got screws in it. This truly harkens from a halcyon age. Oh, Bud followed me down. I'm sure he's excited that I came in here. I don't work down here very much anymore. I've been spending about 80% of my time programming pinball. I'll do that upstairs. Yep, just a little glop top and a speaker. Ooh, the cells are corroded. Do, 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 do. Life is like a game here in Duckburg. Race cars, lasers, airplanes. It's a duck blood. Do, do, do. Man, look at that. There's bugger all to this. Hmm. 389A. 1.45 volts. These are 1.5 volt batteries. I, I, this corroded cell must be what stopped it from working. But they, these, the two good batteries still hold a charge. Huh. I could only find one replacement battery at Menard, so I guess it's gonna have to be enough. Well, the other two were fine, so they could probably last for another 20 years, right? I guess I could have tried going to Walgreens to buy some small batteries, but I didn't feel like mortgaging my kidney. Your imagination can take you anywhere! It lives! Get in there! Okay, Wishbone, I'm gonna need you to take this over the border for me. You ever wonder where I got these scars? Wishbone, what should my major in college be? Your imagination can take you anywhere! Wishbone, how should I end Act 3? Your imagination can take you anywhere! It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter heaven. John 316, I believe. But enough talk! Have at you! <gasps> I did it. Oh, I need new bifocals. I think my prescription has changed again. I didn't have one time my eyes actually got better. It was so weird. Well, 2000. I know I was still doing the show because I would like wake up in the morning, drive to work, put on my glasses, and then I would kind of get a headache in the car. Yeah, it turned out that. Wait, how do I do this? Because I got to go inside and outside. I just have to get his head back on. Doesn't have to be perfect. My God, Jim. I'm an engineer, not a seamstress. Wait, why would, why would he talk like that? That's like the worst Bones impression ever. 
What did he say in that, that, that episode? Murderers! Assassins! They stitch, stitch the people together like garments! But if you want to get pedantic, in the J.J. Calvin timeline, that probe should still be coming. Because the timeline didn't change the fact that Voyager exists. Although maybe it changed the fact that it got intercepted by an advanced race of alien robots. Ah, who am I kidding? I just end up being punching. Punching, punching, punching. Is that all you know, JJ? No, I've also got mystery boxes! Ugh, I'll never get a job as a Chinese sweatshop worker at this rate. I got this really cool uh, sewing kit. I found it at uh, Goodwill back when I was going to Goodwill all the time. Which I've stopped doing because it's like, okay, I have enough random crap. I gave away a lot of the random crap. Yeah, so I went to Goodwill. It was one of the better Goodwills. It was the one on Verona Road. And yeah, they had this sewing box with all this stuff in it for $8. And I'm like, oh, I could use that. Every so often I find the need to sew poorly. All right, let's be really pedantic and use brown thread for his collar, which hides the seam. You don't want it to be unseemly. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Hashtag dad jokes. Why couldn't Chris Pratt's ex wife get through the airport security? Because she was Anna Ferris. All right, Wishbone, I think the surgery is complete. Oh boy, will I be able to play piano after this? Of course. Good, because I couldn't before. I better keep this thing away from Bud. He's been trying to have amorous relations with my robot Sloth lately. I wonder if I could put a picture of that on YouTube. Or would it be cancel Bud? Hey Bud, I have something important to tell you. Your imagination can take you anywhere! Well, two out of three of those batteries weren't bad. And the only reason it stopped working was because one of them corroded. Which got me thinking about... This. <laughs> oh. What's the story, Wishbone? What are, wait, which one's a character ram? It's gotta be this one, right? Yeah, you'd think. Well, it's probably whichever one doesn't have power going to it. We made my niece watch George of the Jungle a few weeks ago. I think, oh yeah, it was when they visited for Thanksgiving. <laughs> that movie's pretty funny. Which one of these apes should we capture and take to Las Vegas? The one playing chess. 3.27 volts. Wow. Yeah, see, it ends with the 64, 64K bits, which means it's 8 kilobytes, which would be the size of the character graphics on the Nintendo. See, the Nintendo cartridge, one of the reasons, well, the reason it's so wide, it has two buses. It has the program bus, and it has the graphics bus, and that was very fortuitous for expanding the capabilities of the games because there's a lot of things you could do with the graphic bus. So in this case, they'd have 128K uh, ROM, and then the system would actually decompress the graphics off the ROM and write them into the character RAM dynamically. So like when you see something like, uh, you know, like the first Mega Man, like when he goes between screens. See so yeah, when there's that slight pause, it's because they're decompressing graphics off of the ROM, decompressing them, and then writing them back to the character RAM. And which would be slowed down because the CPU has to request access to the uh, graphics from the PPU. The PPU always has access to the graphics. The CPU has to ask for it. Well, that's weird. This pin over here is actually no connection because VCC is here, of course, 3.07 volts and 3.27, so that's only a 0.2 volt voltage drop, that's not bad at all, over this diode. That's insane. Well, I guess the question is, how much does this RAM draw? This RAM's like, I've been running for 35 years. All right, here's a brand new cell. 3.33. <laughs> okay, well... Actually, I have a lot of cells here. Um, so fun fact, the number is metric. So in this case, 
It's 20 millimeters in diameter and 3.2 millimeters thick. <gasps> Mind blown. Okay, well, let's be scientific about this. And let's see here. 32, lick it, good. This is, ooh, this one's all beat up. Oh, these ones are energizers in the package. 3.33, 3.33. Three point one, two point six. Okay, this so this one's a little better. Yeah, I'm gonna say three point three three is the baseline. Nineteen eighty seven. Well, that would be the circuit board, not necessarily when this was made. That's a drop of only twenty one millivolts in what thirty five years? That's crazy. The data sheet for this RAM says it has a standby of five point five microwatts. One of these batteries is 240 milliamps, and then you divide that by 0.16, no, 1.6 microamps. That would be 150,000 hours. You divide that by days, divide that by years. 17 years sounds sounds more like what they would have said back in the 80s but looking at the actual reading of it it lasted a lot longer than that man that's that's really low because yeah it was a drop of 21 millivolts 21 millivolt drop after 35 years is 600 microvolts per year okay so then if we think about 3.3 minus 1.8 is probably where it would fail. 1.5 volts. So 1.55 millivolts, 1, 2, 3 microvolts divided by 600. Now, that can't be right. I must have missed a digit someplace. They called me a madman when I decided to own four copies of NBA Live 96 for some reason. But who's laughing now? <laughs> I will parade you before your conquered people as the fallen idol of a pathetic ideal. Bud, are you ready to get banished to the world of Pagan? Why did EA do this? This is so cool. Why? Yeah, this one's very similar to the one that was in The Legend of Zelda. It's an 8K static RAM made by Sharp. Uh, same standby power consumption, 5.5 microwatts. But how many actual watts is it? All right. Uh, give me a ground, baby. Don't tell me this one's dead. Oh, this must be my personal copy from back in the 90s with all my super cool custom characters on it. Okay, why are none of these showing a voltage? That is super odd. I was hoping to use these for a voltage comparison, but all these batteries are flatter than pancakes. Way to go, Sega. I guess Nintendo does what Sega don't. I guess the moral of that story is uh, Zelda lasts forever and NBA Live doesn't. That's insane. 21 millivolts after all these years. Huh. Okay, so the number I saw online was they estimate that Zelda might be able to hold memory until like 2075. Although, as we saw with Wishbone, it's more likely the battery will fail before then, before actually the capacity of the battery would fail the RAM. All right, last up. This is the big show sent in from someone who sent items to me before. Stadia controllers. Remember Stadia? Oh, it's gonna change the world. I read the other day that that High on Life game, Justin Roiland, the game, was originally meant to be a Stadia exclusive. I did not know that. So I guess Google has bricked these for Bluetooth use, but you can use it as a USB wired Includes a Stadia controller and a Google Chromecast Ultra. Oh, that's what something that's something you could actually use. Bluetooth low energy, headset jack, USB C, nice. So I guess the original vision with uh Stadia was you would buy this and you'd use your 
Chromecast. You'd have the Chromecast and the controller, and that's all you would need. Now, I mean, the problem with the streaming gaming, a lot of people say, oh, it's the future. Maybe far, far into the future when we have like quantum tunneling of data. But no matter how good your internet is, you have to deal with the speed of light. To say nothing for like network conditions. Yeah. Let's see how this feels. Kind of reminds me of a cross between the Switch Pro controller and the original PlayStation controller. I read that Stadia had some sort of like a branch prediction. They'd be like, okay, you're doing this in the game and you're going to do one of three following moves and it renders all three and then depending on what you actually do, it sends you down that path. I guess, I'm, how, well, how well would that work though? But apparently that was how it was going to get around the... Um, the thing is, ultimately, end of the day, when you have your when you have your your speed or your data coming into your, you know, oh, I'm streaming a Netflix show or whatever, right? Um, it's a stream of data. It's going one way. So obviously, the faster your internet connection, the higher bit rate that you can have. But it's still being transmitted at the speed of light, whether you've got a fiber modem or, you know, like a 100 megabit cable modem. You're still limited by physics. And, well, and then on top of that, switches and ports. So, you know, you're, it's going to create... There, there's no way there cannot be a delay because you're sending... You're sending your controls to the server, and even though your controls are, like, dead simple compared to a data stream, they still have to be sent, you know, hundreds of miles or whatever and then processed. So, yeah, I don't know... Well, unless you actually had, like, yeah, quantum tunneling of data. Although, the military is going to be using, the, if they ever do that, well, I mean, when they do that, the military will be using it long before we do. That plate was no match for my Dremel, and gee, what a shock. There's one screw in there. <laughs> one screw. It's going to be the one screw controller. We're Google. This VPN service will protect you from hackers, but it's mostly there so you can watch Netflix shows. Most of my forearm strength has dramatically declined in the last two weeks. That was a very difficult to remove screw. They have like some sort of paste on it or something, or Loctite. What would Lewis Rossman say about this? He'd be like, hey everybody, I live in Texas now, but I can't get over my ex. Mother pus bucket, this is like breaking into a safe. These are like the strongest tabs I've ever come across. <laughs> We're going to build our controllers like we build our phones. Oh wait, no, there was a... There was a like a screw exposed to the outside, never mind. Tab together way more securely than Xbox controller. I would I would say too securely, because I don't see how you do this without marring the finish. I mean you could use a plastic kludger, but then it wouldn't be as strong. Hmm. Interesting design. Oh, well, look at this. I've got some adhesive. Got adhesive over the ribbon cable. That's good. That's actually... Wow, that's that's good. You almost never see that. Actually, you pretty much never see that. Yeah, does this one come up in the back, I think? There we go. Oh, yeah, look at these. Look at these tabs. Those are some beefy... <clears throat> Beefosaurus Rex tabs. Interesting. They have... Look, they've got miniature... Tax switch, metal domes for the D-pad, but the other ones are just carbon contact. Oh, it's got a nice assembly around the D-pad, look at that. It's a little more elaborate than the one on the Xbox or PlayStation. So yeah, I guess they really wanted a clicky D-pad. So far, it's a very high quality device. I mean, it's built like a safe, for crying out loud. You could hide all, hide all your valuable documents in here. Looks like, yep, standard Alps potentiometers. Those are the tightest screws I've ever come across in a video game controller. And what's holding this in place? More tabs, probably. Oh yeah, that's tabbed there. <laughs> Can't give you a tab unless you order something. Just give me a Pepsi free. If you want a Pepsi pal, you're gonna pay for it. Oh man, that's. 
really just so tight. Oh, it's got a metal can over the battery. This is a very well-built controller. Maybe a little too well-built. I mean, look at all the internal structures in it. Like it's got all these structures coming off of the screw wells. I mean, this thing is, this thing is built like a tank. You probably drive over this with your car and the only thing that would be damaged would be the analog sticks. Oh no, now I'm one of those fake restoration channels. <laughs> the analogs are still good! This is probably the worst right here. This popped out a little bit. Okay, it looks like it pushed out, but I bet you could push it back in. <laughs> that held up pretty well! Have you ever been to the Nintendo store? near 30 Rock in New York City. It's kind of near like the giant Lego store. They have the Iraq War, Iraq War 1 Game Boy that was blown up in a building and it still works. It's all melted. But somehow the screen's still intact, which seems a little weird. Well, I guess it would be glass. Get back in there. Got it hooked up to Windows and Windows 10, of course, is still rocking their 1995 controller test menu. You know, strangely, the analog the two analog triggers are the things that don't work. Maybe something cracked to stop the Hall effect sensors from working. Shoulder buttons both work. A, B, X, Y. Easy, look, the analogs work perfectly. <laughs> that is crazy. So you can run analogs over with your car, but after you play Elden Ring for 40 hours, the potentiometer will grind loose. Wow, I mean, I guess I'm not too surprised. Like I said a million times, this thing is really well built. Oh, the Stadia button even has a button. This controller lasted longer than the service. Yeah, and they're using Hall Effect sensors for the analog triggers, just like the Xbox One. Uh, oh yeah, they've got uh, actual connectors for the rumble motors. <laughs> I know I say this over and over and over, but connectors are one of the most expensive things in something like this. They're very expensive. Like, look, this is... Oh man, they, yeah, that's what's holding, holding the circuit board in place. The plastic tabs come through this side and then they pr press outward on the circuit board. Man, they could just make these controllers with like Hall Effect sensors instead of analog pots and the thing would be like indestructible. <laughs> this controller will last a million years. Although capitalism prefers things that last two years. Yeah, this thing is so weird. Like, you get it to a point where you think it's going to come apart and then it doesn't. It's like, what's holding, holding it in place? Wow, they put a... Look at this. They inserted a different material just for the contacts for the shoulder tack buttons. It feels like... It feels like nylon. Wow, that's like... Man, the attention to detail in this is pretty impressive. Yeah, it's a different plastic. Actually, it's not nylon. It's too soft to be nylon. Almost was like some kind of rubber. Man, they... Someone really went to town on this. There's the heart of the system. Oh, it uses a free scale like the older Xbox One controllers did. Yeah, free scale MIMXRT1061. Then right next to it, looks like... Uh, I'm guessing that's a quad spy flash. Probably holds a program. You can have your wireless over here. Is there a programming header anywhere? There's a lot of test points on the back. Probably the sturdiest controller I've ever taken apart in my life. Pretty insane. I hope I can remember how to put it back together. Uh, charger looks to be fairly generic. It's not labeled Google or anything. Like what you'd get with a Pixel. Actually, are those labeled Google? I don't know. Oh, this must be the Chromecast. Huh? Ethernet to go into the Chromecast? Interesting. Oh, it's magnetic. Oh wait, that that's magnetic. Oh, so is that so it can hang off your TV like on in the back? Oh, the Chromecast could still be used for something. Although I think both of my dumb TVs have a a fire stick on them. Oh no, it's USB micro! No! You were meant to destroy the Sith, not join them! Now the real question is, can I put it back together? So here's those tabs that go through the PCB. Oh my gosh! 
Who puts this together, Hercules? Man. So if you hear any random noises in the background, it's Bud being bad. I don't, I don't know why he's he's been in such a weird mood lately. See, for like almost the first two years I had Bud, I was still doing most of my work down here in the basement, in my basement lab. And he was mostly fine. He'd either come in the lab and go sit in the uh, packing materials pile, or even if I closed the door, he would just sit outside the door or, or just, you know, mind his business upstairs. But since I started doing that long-term pinball coding project, I do that upstairs so I can use my big computer because I'm also like rendering video and stuff. Not that my downstairs computer can't do that, but the upstairs computer is much better because it's a thread ripper. Bud was okay for like the first four months or so, but in the last month, he's just been, I don't know, really persnickety and needy. And it's kind of annoying. It's like, I'll, I'll be, you know, I'll be upstairs trying to concentrate on code and then it will be like, clunk, like, oh, he just knocked over some DVDs or the spice rack was his thing for a while. He was knocking that all over all, all the time. So I put some panther tape on the kitchen counter and that just made him go to the back to the DVDs. I don't know. I, th I, th I thought he would mellow out. Yeah, so he's actually more of a little jerk now that he's like two and a half than when he was like a kitten. When he was a kitten, he was fine. I've got all these extra screws, but where do they go? It's like he doesn't, doesn't even really need them. Say what you will about the Cedia service as a concept. The controller was incredibly well built. All right, here comes the reverse part of all that tab cracking. Uh, it's not so bad putting it back together. Uh, you can hook this up and use it as a USB controller with a computer, but apparently wireless Bluetooth doesn't work. Which is too bad, because this, this would be a great controller for kids. Like, they would have a very difficult time breaking this. The, con the controller would last for a thousand years, but the analog sticks would be dead in six months. It's kind of like Ford. The engine lasts forever, but the rest of the car falls apart around it. One more thing, my ancient kitchen timer. This thing's really old. Bud knocked it off the counter and now the beep sounds weird. Uh, maybe. Oh, wait, no, it's not the battery. I already checked that. Yeah, Bud, you're trying to destroy my ancient kitchen timer. This thing is like, way older than you. This thing is like 25 years old. I let you live here rent free. I give you free food and what do I get in return? Yeah, see, right there, yeah. I have to admit, the nuclear option of Second cat has crossed my mind. Ah, oh, it's just a big old piezo. Ooh, that piezo was rode hard and put away wet. You can see the ASIC under the glop top there. Application specific integrated circuit. So what they do is they actually, they put the silicon directly onto the PCB because it's much cheaper. And then they cover it with epoxy to protect it instead of putting it in a chip. Yeah, that's all there is to it. Earlier this year, I ordered a bunch of 20 millimeter piezos for the MGC project, and DigiKey sent me 25 millimeter twice instead. So now I have a ton of these 25 millimeter piezos. But look, oh, it was a sign. It was a sign from the heavens. Huh, maybe this wasn't Bud's fault. Look at that. It's like 25 years of cooking grease and slime. Your surgery is almost done, ancient kitchen timer. Will I be able to play piano afterwards? Of course! Great, because I couldn't before! Make sure I line this up correctly so the LCD works. Oh, looks like the negative terminal broke too. Oh man, we got some Goodwill style corrosion there on the negative terminal. I think I'm gonna need to give that a little acid soak. And by acid, I mean vinegar. Oh, pop, pop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. Yeah, I think I burned away enough of the corrosion. Hopefully. This thing thought it had timed its last frozen pizza. It was wrong. Dead kitchen timer. Rise from your gravy. Yeah, I just said that. Don't want to jinx it by putting the screws in first. Timer. I 
It sounds normal again. Ha <laughs> ha, you see that, bud? You can't stop me. This kitchen timer will be running long after you're gone. What do you mean, human? Well, you see, cat, there's this thing called mortality. What? Sure it was a lot easier to take apart than that Stadia controller, I'm telling you what. Nice. Re replace, reduce, recycle? No. Reduce, repair, recycle? I don't know what it is. The three R's. Right to repair. That the big corporations don't want. Well, there you go. You sat and watched an entire video of me fixing or tearing down random things inside my house. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next video.